Well, g'day Curd Nerds. So this is a behind the scenes video. Uh, today we're making, what are we making? Oh, where's my ingredients? All right, can we turn the light on? Let's have a look. There we go. I'm using mustard seeds. Oh, there we go. Mustard seeds and some dark ale uh, to make this cheese. And it's going to be called mustard seed, no, mustard and ale cheese. Uh, yeah, look, it's in the um, the form of uh, Gouda and Edam, that style of cheese. So it'll be a washed curd cheese, just to be a bit sweeter, a bit milder, not so acidic, because we really don't want the mustard seeds being overtaken by a tart cheese. So we want it kind of like a little bit of heat, a little bit of sweetness, and the ale's going to add in a little bit of bitterness, which will be good as well. Anyway, I'm going to get on, grab all the equipment, and start boiling it in the uh, in the big pot that I've got all cleaned up down there. Where is it? Where's my pot? Oh, there it is. Um, I'm also using a new stainless steel um, curd harp given to me by uh, Steve Benz, uh, and there there will be an affiliate link down in the link below. And apparently, shipping internationally now, which is fantastic. Um, so let's get on and uh, sterilize all of this equipment. So because this is a, uh, a washed curd cheese, I've got, a, I've got an extra pot there and I've got some pure water. So I'm gonna need about 3.6 liters, which I think is about a gallon uh, of water. And I have to heat it up to about 63 degrees-ish uh, just to wash the curds later on in the stage. So I'm getting a little like prep now. Um, I'll get the lid and I'll um, put that on the pot and heat the water up a little bit later during the process but yeah so anyway you'll need that sort of stuff uh, to get it going So the, uh, the pot is boiling now, you can see I've got the heat on, whoops, down there, and we've got some boiling action. Oh, there we go. So I'll boil that for 15 minutes is what I normally do, and uh, that sanitizes all of the stainless steel gear, all of the plastic stuff that I've got here, uh, including a new addition. <laughs> You'll find out what that's about a little bit later. But uh, yeah, so we're going to spray that with white vinegar. I've washed it in uh, really hot soapy water, so it's as good as it gets. mustard seeds and they are a most vibrant color they're lovely so I've got three tablespoons of the black mustard seeds and I've got two tablespoons of the yellow mustard seeds just for a little bit of contrast that'll mix very well with the ale I think so this is a bit of a funny recipe this one because it, it has two ripening periods which is unusual it's because I'm using a culture called uh, MA 4001 which is like a 
it's got four different cultures in it and some of them need to be activated at lower temperatures and some of them need to be activated at higher temperatures. Uh, well, that's the recipe I've got anyway, so a bit unusual. Um, I'm just about to do the second ripening period. I've got to heat the milk up, so. So the flocculation test, which is what the little red cap was for, seems to have worked. So I'm going to be doing a separate video on flocculation and how it can help you in making the right curd strength or the right rennet set, the right amount of time anyway, uh, for your cheese making. This will really assist you. Uh, I've just started using it and uh, just to step the cheese making videos up to the next level. Um, so check it out. You'll see a link somewhere here for the flocculation video. I must admit, this would have to be the most relaxing part of cheese making is the stirring. I really do enjoy it, even though, you, you know, your feet tend to hurt near the end, but hey, no big deal. This is what it's all about. Probably why I put the title of my book as Keep Calm and Make Cheese. Very good, very apt. <laughs> So we're up to the draining stage now and uh, yeah this one's quite unique uh, I haven't come across this in a recipe before where you actually have to uh, mill the curds probably every few minutes just to make sure they don't stick together um, tell a lie the Wensleydale recipe uh, does a similar thing anyway there's the curds in all their glory doing their thing uh, draining off and then soon we'll be mixing in the uh, the beer and the mustard and that'll make a pretty interesting looking cheese and tasting, I hope, too. You know what the best part of uh, making a cheese with beer is? It's actually drinking the beer. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Very nice. That's uh, Cooper's Dark Ale for those who didn't notice. Very nice beer indeed. It's a wholly owned Australian beer company, which is very rare these days. Well, I've got the cheese in the press. Um, not much more I can say about that except the mustard seeds looked amazing in the uh, in the curds and hopefully after the first pressing they'll look pretty cool too. Anyway, I'll show you what it looks like after the first pressing. Well, the cheese is in for its third pressing. I didn't show you what it looked like yet. There we go, that's a bit better. A bit darker. Um, yeah, I didn't show you what it looked like because it's a surprise. Uh, it will look amazing. In fact, it does look amazing. But uh, yeah, it's pressing now for a little bit longer. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes. I've still got... Oh, where is it? I've still got lots of washing up to do, but I'll do that a little bit later. But uh, thank you so much for watching the vlog today and watching how I made the mustard and ale cheese. Very interesting looking cheese. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.